Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I know it's been a long time since I did a video and I said that I'd post more regularly, but this time around, I really am gonna post more regularly, I promise. Um, and the reason that I want to start posting is because this January I'm setting myself a little bit of a health challenge. I'm really determined to up my health level even further this January. And the main way that I'm gonna go about doing that is by trying the carnivore diet. Now, the carnivore diet is something that I've already previously mentioned on my channel before, and it's something that I've looked a lot into over the past sort of couple of years as I've looked at different ways that I can combat my autoimmune condition, multiple sclerosis, and you know, just in general, how I can improve my health. And this is something that just keeps coming up, it keeps cropping up, and I'm finding it really hard to ignore now. So I'm gonna go through today sort of the reasons why I'm gonna try the carnivore diet, and also, you know, what I'm planning on doing. And from there, I'm gonna be posting regular updates to update you guys with how it's going. And at the end of it all, after the end of the month, I'll let everyone know how I'm feeling and if I plan to continue or not. So without further ado, let's get into the video. If you enjoy the video, then please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel so that I can reach more people with MS and we can help people along their journey to finding better health. Cause I've been thinking So when I was first diagnosed with MS, I went ferociously searching the internet, looking at ways in which you can overcome it naturally because um, I just didn't believe that it was something that you were just stuck with and that it would just get worse and worse throughout your life. I thought there's gotta be an alternative. And I, you know, I've always been into health and fitness and so I believed in the power of what change in your health can do to the rest of your life and the rest of your, your health and your outlook essentially. And so, obviously, one of the main things I looked into was diet. And as I've mentioned before on this channel, that was one of the big changes I made straight away that I think has helped me stay pretty much relapse-free ever since my diagnosis, which is crazy. I've gone pretty much two and a half years now without a relapse or any issues. So it must be working in some sense. But that diet that I've been on is called the Best Bet Diet. I've done videos in the past where I've explained that in a bit more detail, but so feel free to check those videos out. But essentially you cut out things like dairy, gluten, legumes, so that's soy, lentils, things like that. And then you also try and minimize uh, refined sugars, you cut out processed food, stuff like that. So in general, it's shifting over to a whole food diet whilst cutting out key things like gluten and dairy. Um, but ever since then, I've been really intrigued by the carnivore diet because I keep seeing it in videos that pop up on my YouTube and on my social medias. Um, I see videos from the likes of Paul Saladino and Ken Berry, all discussing the major benefits of switching to a carnivore diet. And at its core, the carnivore diet is the ultimate elimination diet. In the Best Bet diet, what I'm doing is eliminating certain foods that are deemed inflammatory or for some reason or another affect the disease process of MS. It's pretty much, you know, it's, it's difficult at the start, but it's, you know, it's quite accommodating in, in terms of there's still a lot of foods that I can eat. You'd look at what I eat every day and you'd think I just eat normal food. It's just that you wouldn't notice what I was cutting out. Whereas the carnivore diet is kind of the extreme of that where you're cutting out all the different foods except for meat. And I know that sounds crazy because I thought it was crazy when I first heard of it as well because you know we're all told since very young that fruit and vegetables are the healthiest thing for you. That vegetables, you need to eat your veg, your five a day, whatever it might be. That's kind of drummed into us from a young age. Um, but as time has gone by and as science evolves, a lot of people are starting to realize that vegetables might not be as good for us as we first assumed because although they have got a lot of nutrients in them and they've also got lots of anti-nutrients and a lot of defense chemicals built into them because plants at the end of the day don't want to get eaten. And that's a fact because if they get eaten, they're not going to survive, they're not going to pass on their DNA going forward. Plants also can't run away from you like animals can. And so they've got these defense chemicals built into themselves so that they can you know, protect themselves so that animals won't want to eat them, etc. Whereas on the other hand, animals can obviously run away, they can fight you. And so that's their defense mechanism. Whereas plants, 
it's all chemicals that are built in that us humans end up eating and ingesting. And that's proven by the fact that humans can't eat a vast majority of plants that are out there. If you think about it, if you go down to a park or a, the woods or whatever, whatever you might call it um, and look around at all the, the wildlife and the greenery, you wouldn't be able to eat any of those plants. You might be able to see a couple of berries that you would think would be edible, but you wouldn't really trust eating any of those plants. Whereas what would you do naturally if you were kind of a hunter-gatherer in that state? You would find an animal, hunt them down, kill them and eat them. Us humans have kind of adopted to the, the, the sort of 1% of plants that we can tolerate to some degree and we deem that as a health food. And so that's kind of the whole thesis behind this carnivore diet in that by eating carnivore, by eating purely meats, especially red meats and ruminant animals, you're getting all the nutrition you need without those defense chemicals that are damaging um, your gut lining and they're causing this autoimmunity. So the theory goes. As time's gone by, I didn't, I kind of dismissed it at the start, like a lot of you probably will be watching this video thinking that sounds absolutely crazy. Why would I cut out fruit and vegetables? They're the healthiest thing for me. But as time goes by, I've read more and more of the, the data around it and learned more about the, the plant defense chemicals like lectins, oxalates, and there's, there's so many more of these anti-nutrients that actually, they deprive your body of nutrients. So a lot of them affect like your thyroid and other organs in the body, and they actually cause more damage than they do positive, essentially. It's kind of won me over into giving it a go. I keep seeing it. And it's World Carnivore Month at the same time as being Veganuary, which is an odd kind of uh, oxymoron. But I thought I'd give it a go. I wanted to give it a go last year and I kind of wimped out just before. But this year, I'm going to give it a go for a month, see how it goes, see what the health benefits are like. Um, because I do believe that it's, it's great for certain individuals and I want to see if I'm one of those individuals that really needs to cut out a lot of those extra plant and vegetables and see how it affects my energy, my mood, and obviously just my, my general health and fitness. So I'll be trying the carnivore diet for the rest of this month. Now, I'm not going purely strict carnivore. I'm doing kind of a modified carnivore diet that um, Paul Saladino advocates. So it's essentially you're eating meat and then fruits because fruits are the part of the plant that the, the plant actually wants you to eat, which is why they taste much better and it's why they're colourful and interesting rather than kind of vegetables that are dark green leafy things that you know if you saw it when you were walking through a forest you wouldn't pick it up and want to go and eat it whereas the fruits are the part of the plant that they want you to eat so that you then eat it and then pass on the seeds or whatever it might be or in some cases it's a diversion tactic so that you leave the rest of the plant alone and so that's what I'm going to do I'm, I'm including the fruits just to make it a bit more accessible for the first month and also I've heard that, you know, if you go strict pure carnivore in the first month, a lot of people suffer with keto flu when their body struggles to adapt to having no sugar and carbohydrates um, and things like that. And a lot of people suffer with diarrhea as well because the body's just not used to having zero fiber, zero carbohydrates. So it made sense to me to make it more interesting and accessible for that first month so that it's more adventurous and more varied but also because it's kind of easing myself into it. And then maybe towards the last week, I might go a bit stricter. We'll see how it goes. But overall, I'm really confident that this diet is still going to be, um, I'm still going to be getting sort of the carnivore diet effects, the benefits, but whilst keeping it as varied as possible. It's going to be really interesting to see how it affects me because like I say, I've already got quite a good diet in place in terms of I'm doing the best bet diet and it's really helped to keep my MS at bay and all my autoimmune conditions under wraps but I just want to see if this is just going to dial things up to 11 and really help me kick on and feel more energized, feel more productive at work. Those are the kind of things that I'm really pushing for, really just making sure that I'm 100% healthy so that if anything does happen with my MS that it's as limited as possible going forward. I'm really excited to give it a go, a little bit apprehensive because I do like I really still enjoy carbs. I love rice. I love gluten-free bread and gluten-free pasta, which is what I eat on my current diet, and potatoes, things like that. So I am going to miss those foods, but it's only a month. I can give it a go for a month and see what the results are like. So yeah, I'll be posting more videos throughout the month, just updating you on kind of things like what my typical meals are looking like, what type of foods I'm eating, what kind of meals, because obviously that's my, my main worry is that it's going to get a bit boring because... 
I'm not in a financial position where I can be eating the most expensive steak for breakfast, lunch and dinner, which in an ideal world, that's what I would be doing. Um, so I'm gonna have to do it sort of on a budget and being a bit creative with it as well. I'll be sharing all that for those of you who are interested in potentially trying it yourself to improve your health. I'll be providing updates, like I say, throughout the month. So thanks for tuning in. Hopefully you found this interesting and please feel free to do your own research. Have a look into some other YouTubers and the literature online. Find out a bit more about the carnival diet before you um, talk yourself into trying it like me. Um, and like I say, I'll be updating you throughout the month with how it's going. Thanks again for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Cause I've been thinking.